Welcome everyone to the criminal trial process. We're going to be looking at, in a bit more detail, court jurisdiction. So as we delve a bit deeper into the different roles of the different courts, the local court hears summary offences. Now, whether a, a defendant has a summary hearing or a trial by a judge depends on what type of offence he or she has allegedly committed. That is to say, whether it is a summary or an indictable offence. In practice, many less serious indictable offences are dealt with summarily, that is, without a jury. And that can be found under the Criminal Procedures Amendment, brackets, in, Indictable Offences, in brackets, Act of 1995 for New South Wales. Indictable offences are split into three categories, Table 1 offences, Table 2, and Strictly Indictable offences. So, summary hearings. The case is heard in the local court and decided by a magistrate alone. The process in a summary hearing is very similar to trial by jury, except no jury is involved. What happens in a trial by jury is outlined later on. Committal hearings are preliminary proceedings for trial by jury. The prosecutor must convince the magistrate that there is a prima facie case. That means there is sufficiently strong case against the accused to put the matter before a jury. So you're not wasting time. If the magistrate decides that there is a prima facie case, then there is a trial by jury. So think about this in terms of efficiency of court resources, efficiency of the judicial system, and fairness of individuals. Now, the children's court, uh, most charges are against people un that are under 18 years of age or at least were under 18 years of age when the, um, when the alleged crime was committed. And they're heard in a special court, and this is particularly a closed court, so no media, no public viewing, and that's to protect the privacy of the accused or the victims, uh, if they're under 18 as well. So these proceedings are much the same as those of a summary hearing with some important um, exceptions, which you which we'll get into a little bit later. So the purpose of this is not to send kids to juvenile or to juvie, it is for rehabilitation. That's the primary purpose. Now the coroner's court is where there is an unnatural death or an unexplained fire or excessive violence or people have died in police custody or receiving medical care. There will be a coronial inquiry now, the proceedings are more inquisitorial than they are normal court proceedings, meaning that it, the judge is the one gathering the evidence, and the normal rules of evidence and procedure are not followed because of this. If there is evidence of a person committing a serious offence, an indictment will be issued and the person will be tried by a, a judge and jury in the usual way. Now, the Drug Court of New South Wales was established in 1999, so it's a relatively new court. It handles non-violent cases committed by adult offenders who are dependent on illicit or illegal drugs. This court's aims are not to punish. It's not about putting them in the prison system. It's about rehabilitation, and it's really trying to be a diversionary court. So it's... It's about making sure people aren't re repeat offenders and then are going to be, um, it's going to reduce the amount of drug related crime and drug, ad drug addictions within the community. So the drug court runs a 12 month program as an alternative to imprisonment, and that includes judicial and probationary, super um, probationary supervision, sorry drug treatment, support services, as well as random drug testing, just like you'd see uh, drivers on the road, RBT'd. It's a similar um, method with random drug testing. If offenders break conditions of the program, they are then sentenced to jail under, or they are then sentenced under normal judicial process. In March 2000, the first offenders tried under this jurisdiction, finished the 12-month program, and in the first year of the court, 261 offenders began the program and 168 remained on the program. So they're very good stats. Now, 
This was such an important court that a second one was set up in the Toronto area of West Newcastle. So that's just um, 150 kilometers north of Sydney and about 20 kilometers inland, maybe a bit longer. Now, the district court has jurisdiction over indictable and criminal offences, except for murder and other very serious crimes. Criminal, ma criminal matters in the district court can be heard by a judge and jury. In some cases, such as Table 1 and Table 2 offences, uh, the case can be heard by a judge alone. In trial by jury, the case is heard by a judge and jury, and the court process is the same as that in a summary hearing, except that the jury, not the judge, decides the guilt or innocence. And just so you know, trial by jury is used in less than 1% of criminal cases, as a rule of thumb. The district court also hears appeals regarding decisions by magistrates in most criminal matters and appeals are going to be discussed in a bit more detail when we go on to the next set of courts. So the Supreme Court has appellate jurisdiction from the district court and local courts which we've already covered and they also hear very serious indictable matters such as murder, complex drug cases and arson. These are heard by a judge and jury now, also, the Supreme Court sits as the criminal, uh, sorry, the Court of Criminal Appeal. Now, the Court of Criminal Appeal has a panel of three or five judges, and it hears appeals from the local court on questions of law, the district court, and single judge decisions in the Supreme Court. An appeal is when a case is taken. Uh, from one court to a higher court in the hierarchy because either party disagrees with the decision of a lower court. The higher court may therefore change the decision either way. In order for an appeal to succeed, the appellant must show that the lower court judge either wrongly used or wrongly misinterpreted the law. No new evidence or fact can be heard. Now, both federal and state court systems have avenues for lower court decisions to be appealed. The system of appeals helps to ensure that the effects of wrong decisions made by a judge or magistrate when exercising their discretion are minimized. Also, right down at the bottom here, we can see the right to appeal is really important, but is it fair or is it something that is only limited to those in, who, in society that can actually afford the very expensive legal fees? Now, the Federal Court of Australia, just very quickly, although most criminal court matters come under state jurisdiction, there are some criminal matters that are heard by the Federal Court of Australia. The particular ones that we'll go into when we reach consumers is those that fall under the Trade Practices Act of 1974, which is Commonwealth legislation, and particularly uh, when it comes to breaches of copyright. Now, the High Court of Australia, in, regarding criminal matters, hears appeals from the Federal Court of Australia and from the New South Wales Court of Criminal Appeal. So it's usually reserved for areas of um, the existing areas of law that require clarification. So in here we've got R versus Zachevic. The High Court decision clarified an area of law regarding self-defense and precisely what had to be proved by the defense in order to establish it. It also hears new areas of law. So you can particularly think of the way technology uh, is impacting society and the way that the law is trying to catch up with uh, the way technology is improving and proliferating at just such an incredible pace.